So we are here today at the opening of Labyrinth Awakening. It's the expansion set to the Labyrinth. This came out about six years ago. This came out a month ago. And I'm Trevor Bender, I'm the designer of the game. And uh, let's see what's in the box. Now first off, I got my handy Boy Scout knife. As you read the uh, rules and the designer's notes, you'll know that I am a Boy Scout, meaning a Scout leader. And uh, that's the wrong blade there, it's got a bigger one. We'll open this thing up. So <laughs> Don't want to leave my token chip there. So this game is designed to be a Ziploc expansion that you store inside the box here. This, for shipping purposes, GMT uses these plain boxes. You can order a separate box, it's just three inches. I don't have a copy of it here, but it would handle both. Or you can kind of strategically rearrange your labyrinth box to have everything inside it. Here comes bubble wrapped. and the Ziploc bag that I was describing. Inside the game are two separate decks of a total of 120 cards. So the Labyrinth game was cards one, zero to 120. This is 121 to 240. So you can play both decks together. You can mix up and do a campaign game from 9-11 through 2015. It includes 15 blue pieces and five more jihadist black pieces that are added to the, the pool of mark, uh, available units. There's uh, three player aid cards that come in the game. Generic one, and then several for the bots. Let's see there. Okay, piece of these cards. The counter tray is one counter tray. It includes several uh, units used in the game, including some reaction awakening markers. These are key, key elements in the game to represent the Arab Spring. So when I designed this game, I approached Volko Runke, the designer of Labyrinth, and said, I'd like to, to tailor your game for the Arab Spring. This, of course, was the movement that began in Tunisia in December of 2010, then transpired over the next 19, 20 months across the Muslim world. And it spawned many, what appeared to be movements of uh, freedom and perhaps even democracy, but certainly more representation of the Muslim people in their countries. Unfortunately, many of those transitioned to civil war as we see going on in Syria, Libya today, and, uh, and also Yemen. The game covers both that aspects of, uh, and includes new countries. We have Nigeria and Mali, which weren't on the map. Those go on the map now. So you now have, uh, instead of 18 uh, Muslim countries, there's now 20. And um, there's uh, a few other countries that switch up a little bit. There are some rules for uh, civil war, which can happen. That was not something that happened in the first game. And a variety of other markers to, to uh, show events in play. One of the key aspects of the game is polarization. It's where countries move towards either good or Islamic rule based on the awakening and reaction markers that are in the country, and so there's a mnemonic there. There are replacement plot markers. These are the exact same ones that come in the original game, but these pieces more, more than any other get worn out, so we've included those as some spares. And then there's some bot counters here to show how effective the bots are. Either lower is easy and, and five is, is a harder bot to play against. So, oh, let me show you the artwork. This work artwork was done by Roger McGowan. He did the, the cover of the game. And uh, as you can see, it's a superimposition of the Syrian flag on top of the face of somebody. We don't know who this person is. Could be man or woman. Could be jihadist. Could be refugee. Um, it's part of the labyrinth of the game. <laughs> <laughs> the game is titled Labyrinth Awakening because of the awakening movement for three different reasons. One, it was the awakening of people to the Arab Spring popular movement. And uh, two, it was the awakening of um, what Al-Qaeda thought would be the jihadist movement. And ultimately, it was ISIS that had the greater awakening. And then you could say three would be the awakening of even maybe women's rights across the Middle East as they rose up, especially in Tariq Square in Egypt, to try to get representation there. So enjoy the game. Enjoy the cards. They're, as they, one of the playtesters said, they're ripped from today's headlines. Mm -hmm. And uh, lots of fun events there to look into and explore this topic, which is very current.
in, uh, in its design. Is that what the question mark is for every day you watch the news and add a new card? To it? <laughs> yeah, people have asked me about that. Can you come out with a new, three card, a three, a new deck of yeah. cards every three months? You know? What time is it now? The news is on now. <laughs> card of the month. <laughs> I've actually thought of 12 more that I might add in in a future expansion, but uh, just write them down on a list for someday. Yeah, good. <laughs> Thanks, guys. For yeah, looks good. Looks good.